it's interesting um kanye's kind of approach now since he's kind of decided to quote unquote move back to chicago and the sort of reception that the kind of media or people in general have had towards it and i think it's less a conversation about kanye and also a conversation about in general how we kind of respond to people when they try and make amends right um so Kanye's obviously had a bit of an interesting year um, so far. You know, he's kind of had a lot of kind of public um, outbursts and breakdowns or breakthroughs, as he likes to call them, um, in general, which, is you know, it's nothing new if you're a Kanye fan. But it's kind of, I think, for the first time, especially in hip-hop, it seems like, because I've, I've, been, I've been okay with it because, you know, I grew up being a Morrissey fan and the Smiths, or the Smiths and the Morrissey fan, right? So I'm used to being, I'm used to having, I'm used to having conflicting um ideas on people who i deem to be musical geniuses right like if you like if you like the smiths and you like morrissey you there's a moment where you have to kind of really decide if you really like him because he's got some questionable political and societal ideas right really like that'll really drive most people away so the fans that are morrissey or smith fans now they don't care what he says they kind of put that to one side and just concentrate on the music so i think for the first time ever in hip-hop for the most part especially someone popular i think it's easy to hate someone that you don't like right or it's easy to kind of discount someone that you don't really care for but i think because kanye has contributed so much to music or to culture overall people are really struggling are really kind of struggling what to do with this guy now that they have in front of them because it's not the same kind of we knew before because eh, he's old he's older now he's i'm not sure 40 something right so he's he's obviously older he's going through a lot of different experiences he's a married man now he's got children he's got a multi-billion dollar company and easy like he's everything's changed in surroundings he's not he's not as dependent on having kind of co-signs from certain people like he's not trying to uh, break new ground he's not trying to break through doors break through walls he's in a whole different environment now so you know it's it makes sense that he's political or philosophical kind of uh leanings or uh foundations will kind of change somewhat along the way so people now have to kind of really come to grips of like can i still be a kanye fan and like what he says right um can i still be kind of a fan of kanye's music like what he says so that's something you have to kind of internalize and kind of debate yourself. I'm I'm happy to do that. I think I'm happy depending on the crime. If it's like, you know, I don't know. Um, if, if, if this artist is raping kids or, you know, raping women or, I don't know, kidnapping people and shit, you know, I'm out or whatever, right, in general, right? But I think for the most part, I can put um, the person and the actual creative work or, you know, what they do to one side. I can put them on either ends, right? I can, I can uh, what's that word called? I can categorize things i can partition things right sort of like you know defragmentation on the pc i can defrag right i can put things in different compartments different positions and say okay cool let's leave that there so i'm, I'm okay with it. i'm fine I, I don't mind you can wire and do what he wants i'm always going to enjoy the music i'm always going to check for his music right it might not be all to my taste at the moment like you know yeah it wasn't really my favorite but i thought kids see ghost was really cool i thought he did amazing job on Pusha t's album i thought some of the bits on china taylor's album were great like i think the last the last single that he did with a uh, little pump even though people don't want to admit it, is probably as good if not as if not better than fucking tigers do 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 it's the same same sort of vein you feel like you shouldn't like it but do 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 but you should like it and it's like you know what is it how's that chorus go for kanye's track um uh, um you a hoe you a hoe something like um slut i don't know something i don't know something about him fucking a hoe or something right so anyway um that track is really good little pump did is actually had a really good feature on that actually surprisingly so um it's always, it's always nice when you have... It's always great to see... I think that's also a mark of somebody that's really talented. I think in Little Pump. It's always awesome to see when Little Pump is doing his own thing. He kind of he kind of phones it in, in a way. Not phones it in, but he's got his pocket and he knows he can kind of just smash that, right? There's no there's no, there's no trying. There's no effort there. Um, not effort. There's no, that's the wrong thing to say. He doesn't have to do... He doesn't have to work as hard to do his, his sound, right? To work, because it's his sound. But I like it when you hear someone like a little pump jump on a record with Kanye, who's you know, even though he's a, even though his output's a lot more quick, is a lot more, he's tur he's turning tracks around a lot more quicker than he was before, right? He's not spending five hundred hours on a track on an album like he did with My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. It's always nice to see that when Pump goes and sits down with a really, you know, a, a fucking professional artist or professional musician in the fact of in the shape of um or composer whatever you want to call him in the shape of Kanye West it's great to see that he can elevate what he does like he sounds amazing like on that Kanye track like um even his diction the way he's pronouncing words his flow his cadence like he sounds incredible he sounds perfect so you can tell that he is not not dumbing down what he does but you can tell that what he does comes easy comes natural and he doesn't need to try as hard as he 
easy ones. But if you want, if you want him to try, he will try and he'll, he'll do that. Like so similar when you saw that video of Juice World doing a one hour freestyle on um, Westfield, right on um, Capital FM, whatever he did on, on video. You got to see, okay, cool. This this um, Juice World guy is you know, part of the mumble rap, SoundCloud, emo rap community, but he can also freestyle. Like he can rap like anyone else can. So it wouldn't be surprised me if the next collaboration we we hear with um, Six Nine and Kanye because we saw a lot of videos of him. It wouldn't surprise me if we hear the best version of Six Nine with Kanye. Like we're like, wow, this Six Nine dude can actually rap. Like he sounds amazing. His melodies are great. Like I watch. I, I bet that happens, right? Anyway, so I'm always gonna check for his music. Um, but it's interesting to see the backlash that Kanye is getting about the the cynicism that's attached to Kanye going back to Chicago and sort of like connecting with his roots and kind of make trying to make amends for some of the um irresp quote quote irresponsible things he's done to the black community, which I don't think is irresponsible. I think you're allowed to have an opinion. I just think sometimes. Um, I think sometimes people put too much credence in Kanye's opinion when he hasn't even fought it through himself. That's what I think. I think they take his what he says too seriously because I think he's been so serious of everything else he said in his life, right? For his whole career, he's been fucking so serious, so gung ho. He's been fighting the fight for everyone, right? That I think now because he doesn't say the things that people want to hear, uh, people take that, that really seriously. And I just think for someone that hasn't really fought through what they said, and I, I don't know, he said recently in an interview with some Chicago dude that you know he doesn't read books and that he goes with his gut and he goes with what he feels. That kind of sounds a little bit Tea Party-ish. That kind of sounds a little bit Republican, a little bit, you know what I mean, a little bit conservative. That, that's what someone would say that believes that, um, who believes uh, Obama wasn't born in the USA, right? That he's somehow some sort of like, um, f you know, covert uh, ISIS plant who's actually praying secretly um, in the Oval Office or who was praying secretly in the Oval Office. Like, that's that kind of logic of like, no, I, you watch those videos a lot um, when they when they go to conservative um, summits and they ask people questions about things and, you know, they present them facts. But they're like, no, I feel this. This is my feeling. This is what I'm going to go with. Like, I'm sorry, but your feelings cannot be trusted, man, especially if they don't, especially if they aren't grounded in anything. If you just like feel something, it just feels a way about, about, about a system or about political ideology or about a societal issue that's a lot more complex than just a feeling, right? You can you have you might have a feeling of, you know, your point of view, I feel like this about something the way the world looks to me. But understanding the way politics work and having a really nuanced opinion on it, you can't just go with feeling. It's not really it's not the way to go. You're not gonna you're not gonna come to an informed decision, right? Um and if anything it's illustrated by the hysteria people have with these reactions. I think when you go with feelings and you say bombastic stuff and people don't agree with it, they're going to flip out and you're seeing the reaction to it now. And he isn't really apologizing for what he said. He's not apologizing for standing next to Trump. He still likes Trump. He thinks Trump's a quote-unquote American, um, you know, the archetypical American dream, which some people could argue in favor of. Like, you know, he, he did, you know, he was, you know, he didn't kind of like come up, he didn't kind of... Um, he didn't kind of come up from nothing in that respect. He did, you know, his father was a successful businessman and he was given, quote unquote, a one million dollar loan, which isn't, you know, people kind of scoff at that and say, oh, he was given one million dollar loan. We don't have that kind of loan. But I also don't think it, it should be kind of glossed over. I don't think there's a lot of people out there who would be able to take one million dollars and be Donald Trump. I don't think so. I don't think that happens. I think some people would probably spend a million dollars quicker than they think they would right some people wouldn't probably know how to manage it wouldn't know how to invest it so it's not an easy thing to do to kind of quote unquote you know some of the stuff he's done has been a bit shady but it's not easy to turn money into more money especially when you come from money i don't see where the desire would be to actually do it right that's why some of these rich kids that go out and make businesses or kind of try and give back or try and be entrepreneurial i think it needs to be credited it should people should clap like if you're rich and there's no rule there shouldn't like you know it's part of the reason why people make a business or you know facebook was basically started because you know mark zuckerberg was a lonely geek right he didn't have that many friends and he wanted to be quote unquote the center of attention or to connect with more people so some some of the greatest businesses that we have at the moment are kind of created because of a lack that someone has in their own life right they're trying to fill their own void or, or they're trying to provide for a family or they're trying to change the course of uh change direct the course direction of their family overall of their gen of, of their of their family history or whatever it may be right they're trying to employ some friends who they feel like they don't get the shine they need to get so for you to be rich at like donald trump and to also you know do what he done and then eventually become president i can see why um kanye would see him as an uh, as a you know as some sort of like um inspirational figure that you can kind of you know clap to because you know kind of said his whole career people said no and said he can't do certain things so maybe that is why he likes him but anyway he hasn't he hasn't apologized for all those things he just he's kind of apologizing for the way people feel about it and he's trying to re, re kind of you know redo his image he's going back to chicago 
And at the moment, people are a bit cynical about it, saying that it's a rebrand and he's not, you know, you hear a lot on the Joe Budden podcast that, oh, it's a rebrand and it won't be long until he goes to Harold's Chicken, which I'm assuming is like, um, Harold's must be like the Morley's of Chicago and quote, and you know, and, and right on cue, Kim Kardashian posts a picture of her eating Harold's Chicken. So it's like, you know, he's doing the whole rebrand. He's completely he's moving his family. Oh, he's, he's moving permanently to Chicago now, which I don't really believe, you know. I don't think he's going to totally leave LA. He's got probably a lot of things to handle in LA still. Um, the house that he kind of did. He didn't really do a tour of the house, but the interior looked really nice when he had the interview with Charlemagne. So I don't know. Maybe he will. Uh, maybe he'll follow through with it. Because um, so far, he's kept his promises, hasn't he? He did say he's going to drop those albums. A lot of people didn't think he was going to drop them, but he actually did. Um, they all came out on time, I think, apart from Tiana Taylor's, right? For the most part. Um so yeah, he's trying to he's trying to rebrand himself. He is trying to make amends because I think he's realizing. Maybe he's not realizing now, but I think is he realizing. I don't know what he realizes, but I, I just think in general, not to be gossipy about people's business, but I just think in general, I think this should be a lesson to all that you know people should be allowed to make amends, however heavy-handed it might look like right i think you should be allowed to make amends and to make an effort i think you should be judged by your actions right and not by what you say so i think if he consistently tries to go out of his way not to annoy people right and not to rub them up the wrong way just because he can right just because he can turn on the the kind of hype switch and get people interested in what he has to do because some people would argue that he's he only does this when he wants to sell something to people right and he's got loads of yeezys coming out and all that malarkey and he's opening new offices of yeezy and all that stuff people are kind of getting cynical about that but i think if he's trying to recap if he's trying to um reconstruct his image or trying to repair damage that he's done or that he feels that like people are disappointed in that's all that's all well and good in my opinion i think he should be allowed to do so the only the only thing that's a really interesting the subtext of it is like you know the kind of line you said about missing don c and then you see an image of don c with virgil when he's djing at the drake's um block party thing in new york that's the thing that'd be you know I'd, i kind of see where his kind of pain will come from but then again i don't know where where the split happened i don't know where it suddenly because you know even looking at the pictures you see of kanye around they're not the same people that are around him from before i don't buy into the whole um uh black twitter mo um kind of you know um narrative that kanye needs a black woman in his life to hold him down which kind of insinuates that kanye needs more black people in his life to hold him down or to kind of pull him up in the stuff that he's saying i don't think that's true and i think it's a little bit i think it's a little bit disingenuous uh it's disrespectful um and it also doesn't make any sense. Just because you're black doesn't mean you're going to talk sense about a uh, an issue that affects black people. It doesn't make any sense. You know, I don't represent all black people and they don't either. So they're talking out their ass in that respect. But it does it does seem interesting that um, for some people, especially the biggest stars, they do tend to keep the same people around them for grounding purposes, it seems like, right? Because when you get really big um, and you become a real big global icon, it, you can sometimes lose a perception of reality. And you sometimes need people who are with you uh, sleeping on a futon somewhere in a dusty apartment in the middle of Chicago to still be there when you're selling out arenas and selling shoes out in two seconds and to kind of like, you know, to bring you down a notch, quote unquote, right? Um, to kind of just give you, just kind of give you some grounding, right? To tell you when you're acting out because those are the people that are going to do it. The people that you hire, um, that are paid to kind of make sure that your success aren't necessarily going to pull you up on your bullshit because their job is dependent on it, right? Or if you make them, or if you give, you know, if you're a manager, you're going to, you know, you're going to, you're not going to be the voice of reason in the room with Kanye. That doesn't make sense. Um, so, you know, that kind of star power does that. But it is interesting to see that a lot of the people that are around him in the beginning or even during the My Be Able to the Fancy era aren't necessarily there now in the pictures. Maybe they don't want to take pictures and shit, but you don't really see them being talked about or mentioned in the music and he kind of alluded to it when he said that Don C isn't around anymore he started, and then he started crying when he started reminiscing about it so it must be a bit weird to see his friend that who's crying about who's not necessarily around anymore on the stage with Drake who they're now having this big public beef about it must be strange but again like I said I don't want to get in the chat gosh like I don't know what the fuck's going on this could, this could all be wrestling this could all be a simulation we don't know but I think Kanye should be allowed to rehabilitate himself if he is going back to Chicago and trying to do make amends and make some sort of an impact there with you know the gun crime and all that malarkey and trying to reconnect with some of the guys from the drill scene who he kind of tapped into when he was doing making Yeezus and stuff like still blood on the leaves still one of my favorite tracks um then yeah let him do it man